adventure, sports, outdoors. With host, Harry Canterbury. There I was, back in the wild again. And I fell right at home, where I belong. I had that feeling coming over me again. Just like it happened so many times before. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway, Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily, Eastport Marina, one of the only marinas in its class between Chicago and St. Louis, on Mariner's Way in East Peoria. Goodwill, supporting our veterans with job placement assistance, health, housing, and resource referrals, and the General Wayne A. Downing Home for Veterans, all because you shop and donate. And by Lori Feld of Allstate Insurance, conveniently located in Peoria, East Peoria, and Springfield. Our thanks to all of these sponsors. Hi, Harry Canterbury with another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. We've got a very special guest, a dear friend of mine, Richard Pearson from the Illinois State Rifle Association. Richard's been with the Illinois State Rifle Association for quite some time. How many years have you uh, been affiliated? Well, I became president in 1998, mm -hmm. and then I became uh, executive director, which means I get paid, mm -hmm. in uh, 2005. Okay, so it's been an interesting um, Right, hasn't it's it? It's that, exactly the word. It's That's a ride. Right. It's like being on a, uh, a uh, bucking bronco. <laughs> bucking bronco. Okay. Uh, well, Richard, tell everyone that uh, doesn't know about what does the Illinois State Rifle Association do here in the state of Illinois? Well, essentially, we do almost everything. You know, We, we are officially an uh, education and training organization, and we hold about 400 training events a year. And so that's, uh, that's a load. And uh, because we want people to be able to use firearms and to have their Second Amendment rights, we do a lot of lobbying and political work, too. We don't really want to do that, but we have no choice. That's right. So uh, they forced us into it, so okay. Uh, is Illinois the most unfriendliest gun state in the Union, or is another state? Oh, no, no. There are other states that are more unfriendly. California, uh, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey. New York. Uh, yeah, the whole East Coast. Uh, Without your involvement and uh, dedication, and I know this, and many other people that uh, know Richard know this, without you working as hard as you do, there's a good chance we wouldn't have concealed carry in the state, and a lot of other things would have been made illegal. Give well, us. that may be true. i got to remember that I have lots of people, lots of volunteers, lots of members that uh, that help with all this stuff. Ha has, has there been an effort to get rid of the Floyd card in Illinois? Uh, there have been several attempts to do that, but because it only costs a dollar a year, it's been found not to be an impediment. So uh, they constantly want to raise the Floyd card. The last uh, round, it was uh, SB 1966 to raise the Floyd card to... Uh, uh, started out at $500 a year, but they also wanted to put add fingerprints on it and all kinds of uh, things into the Floyd card that would make it unconstitutional. And so, if they if they pay, ever pass that, uh, we will go to the Supreme Court on that. I'm sure that uh, uh, you know if a, if a poll tax, which is two dollars a voter, was unconstitutional, I'm sure five hundred dollars for a Floyd card would be I, unconstitutional. I would, I, would, I would think so. Right, and Open plus Supreme all the other states, you know, they want to say, well, you have to have fingerprints. There's no other constitutional right you need to have fingerprints for. But you do, for concealed carry, of course. Right, right, but that's that's optional. 
but just to hone and uh, have a firearm and shoot it recreationally and to hunt with it, there's that's that's way beyond the pale. Illinois was the last state in the union to get concealed carry, and I know a little bit about uh, what happened and what your organization did in order to get that to go down. Right. But give everybody, Mr. McDonald in Chicago, talk right. about that whole process and what happened. Well, uh, Illinois did, would, would not allow concealed carry, and Illinois also did not have open carry. So every other state has one or the other in some form. If not both. If not both, exactly. And so Illinois had neither, and so we had to develop a case uh, and Otis McDonald was the uh, gentleman, I mean a gentleman. Met him, yes. He and was. he was on the police, uh, the uh, Citizens Police Board and all that kind of stuff. He had two or three people shooting outside his house at three or four different times, and he couldn't get the police to answer. Uh, they wouldn't come, even though he was on the Citizens Advisory Board. And so uh, we, uh, we went through a lot of uh, people. We decided we were going to file suit on that basis. Uh, the process of finding uh, plaintiffs in this case was a very long one because we had to interview people and uh, we started out we interviewed 52 people and out of that we got four that would testify and go that, to court that, yeah, that, that were willing to do it right. it's one thing to say uh, yeah I want to be in a court case it's another thing when you tell them you're going to go to the Supreme Court and we're not sure what's going to happen and I might add Mr. McDonald's passed away in the last couple of years yes he did he had stomach cancer yeah so uh, but he's a great man, and uh, I met him at one of our early rallies uh, in the 1990s in Springfield, and all he wanted to do was register his squirrel rifle because he loved the squirrel hunt. Mm -hmm. And uh, he couldn't couldn't own a gun in that. In right. That well, they wouldn't let him register, it, so he couldn't have it. You know. So it was uh, it, it and it developed from here there, and then he wanted a handgun to defend himself, and of course that 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 couldn't happen either. Before we get into, uh, what, you know, the big thing is the Floyd card. Uh, they're not. I know a fellow that uh, applied for one in January, you know, December of last year. He's still waiting, and we're going to talk about uh, that. But before we get there, I want to want to ask you a question. And you have been asked this by many, many places. I've seen you on television, national TV too. You've been on a lot of lot of shows over the last many years. Many years. <laughs> many years. What's the problem with society today? Why Why is it people are killing each other? Why is it... Uh... As far as all the murders go, all that is driven by drug-fueled gangs. It, you know, the drug trade is worth probably uh, several billion dollars in the city of Chicago. And you get some uh, young man who has not got any money, hasn't had a high school education, uh, and he sees the guy driving by in the Escalade with the big wheels on it. He wants to do that, too, and says, what's that guy doing? He says, he sells drugs, and said, where do I sign? And so, you know, if, if you have, uh, uh, if you're making that much money and you've had a very poor upbringing, uh, human life doesn't mean anything to you. So if you, if you look at the, these uh, people who do that uh, or are involved in it, or even sometimes the victims of this, they're poorly educated in Chicago schools. Uh, they have very little opportunity, very little economic opportunity in Chicago. None. And uh, so what you have then is a gang turf war, because the more turf you own, the more, uh, the more drugs you can sell. Well, I understand there's nearly 120,000 gang members just on the south side of Chicago. Uh, Chicago right. itself is about 2.7 million people. Right. And there's only 12,000 policemen in the city of Chicago, so there's 117,000 is the, the number they come up with. It's probably larger than that. Right. But how do you police 120,000 people who want to kill each other? Well, first of all, you have to have a better, uh, a, a larger uh, police force. You know, the first thing they do is they do away with the gang units to save money. Well, that's the gangs are the problem, so you, you, you do that. Uh, they should, there's the... Uh, Capacity of the city of Chicago is supposed to, as far as policemen go, is supposed to be 16,000. But they keep underfunding them, or they make life tough on them, and so they never have that. What, in your opinion, what's going to happen, and what's the future of not so much the country, although every state follows eventually, yeah, exactly. 
But what's going to happen in, in our state? This is our home. It's where we live. You know, and Chicago is a couple hours away north, you know? Yep. It's not that far. You go up there all the time for business things and stuff. It's not far at all. What What's going to happen? Is it going to get better? Is it going to get worse? What's your opinion? Well, the, the answer is it depends on who gets elected mayor. Okay. If uh, you get a, a, a guy like uh, Mayor Richard M. Daly, the original Mayor Daly. Yeah, he says, you yeah. loot, we shoot. That's right. Yeah. You know, he, you know, he, was, he, he ended was, that. He, it kind of quieted down real uh, quick. He, he was a tough guy. Yeah. And uh, and if you got out of line, you know. Pete straightened you up. That's right. You were going to pay. Here in Peoria, not too long ago, we had 13 people shot in the little sleepy town of Peoria, Illinois, in my hometown. There was 19 people shot in Peoria, one fatality. Um, and there was shootings in other parts of the city, but in one place, 13 people shot, over a hundred rounds fired. In Peoria, Illinois, you know, this isn't Chicago, this isn't Detroit, it's Peoria. It's starting well, to go everywhere. Right, but the one thing that, you know, they're always already talking about, more, we need, the problem is the mayor said there's no background check, the mayor of Chicago said there's no background check. Well, they're blaming checks. it all on us and you and right. the gun. But, but that isn't true. If you're a, a firearm owner, have a FOID card in the state of Illinois, you go through a background check every night. If you are a concealed carry holder, you go through two background checks every night. If something comes up, your FOID card's canceled, they come out and get your FOID card. And your guns. Right, these people, are not legal gun owners. Everybody has to go through a background check. Right. All right. So you have to fill out a form called the 4473. You have to put your FOID card number on it. The uh, gun dealer has to call in. He has to get an approved no approval number. You have to wait 72 hours, mm -hmm. you know. So, but there are cases where that has stopped purchases. The problem has been is these people who try to purchase a gun illegally are never prosecuted. Okay. Why is that? I could never I, figure I, that I, out. I, you know what? I don't know that answer. Then why either. have the law if you don't prosecute them? Right. So you get the you get a guy that's uh, been a burglar, robber, murderer, drug dealer. You know, mm -hmm. he tries to purchase a car, uh, a firearm. He gets denied. The government doesn't prosecute him. That's illegal. That's illegal to do that. But we don't do anything about it. Nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. So. Uh, well, let's get to the one that's. Uh, you're suing the. Uh, Illinois State Police? Illinois State Police, uh, uh, Brandon Kelly, the uh, director. But we, we, sue, we, we, sue, we sue the position, not the person. You right. know? And so what has happened with the FOID cards is that they've been getting slower and slower on the new end of FOID cards. And so this particular case uh, deals with the failure to issue new FOID cards in the 30-day time period. So, so there's, within 30 days, they either have to deny or issue within that window of 30 days. Right. And, and they I have, have been a doing friend this. of mine who lives in uh, Springfield, Illinois, so it wasn't the mail. Yes, it wasn't the mail. It wasn't well, the mail. you never know. Well, you yeah. never know. <laughs> and he uh, filed for his FOID card in December of last year. Mm -hmm. And here we are in August, and right. he still hasn't got it. That's why you're doing it. Right. That's right. And the history of that, and of course, there's other issues that will come up, like the failure to issue void card renewals. Uh, you know, so you could the, the the governor has declared by executive order that your void card is valid, but it really is only valid to keep the police from knocking on your door and taking your firearms. So and, yeah, so what you're doing is they're they're creating right, a right. criminal act. Right, you, but you but you can transport it. You can use your firearms, mm -hmm. but you can't buy ammunition. You can't buy a new gun. Mm -hmm. You know, and people say, well, the, the federal law says that after seventy two hours, you can uh, the uh, the uh, firearm dealer can issue you a uh, a uh, give you a, a firearm uh, if you order one. But the problem is that what they don't understand is if that approval doesn't come back or that person is a denied person. The firearm dealer in that case would become very directly liable, so it's too risky for them to do that. All right. So on the Floyd card, they're going to do a federal background check anyway. I mean, that's what the other states do: Indiana, right. Kentucky. Right. The Floyd card is actually probably outmoded, but getting rid of it is a little bit more difficult than. Yeah, that there's be. something about state. Uh, you get it, you got it, and right. that's the yep. end of it. You know. So. Uh, 
the, the problem with the Floyd card has been, it started actually in the Quinn administration. At that time, there were 39 people that were supposed to staff the uh, Floyd division. And with a hiring freeze, uh, it was cut to 13 people. So by governmental action, he actually limited, uh, the uh, Governor Quinn limited the number of uh, people who could get void cards simply by not putting anybody there who could process them. As time went on, you know, we passed concealed carry. Part of the concealed carry act was to fund the concealed carry computers and the void computers to bring it up to, up to speed. So when you get a, uh, when you, uh, get your concealed carry license, it costs you $150. 120 of that goes to the state police for expenses. The problem has been that the state police have not been hiring uh, people. Uh, and so what happens is those funds have gotten swept. So we have given them probably between 80 and $90 million in... Um, how many years? And uh, since uh, the Concealed Carry Act was passed, eighty between eighty and a hundred million, somewhere in there. Yeah, right. Okay. Since con Concealed Carry was passed about six, seven years ago, uh, two thousand and twelve. Two thousand and twelve. Right. Where did all that money go? Well, it went away. It went to the general fund. Went to the general fund. See, so that's the the. the Politicians do not like earmarked money because that means you have to use it. So they come up with all kinds of ways to steal it. In this case, though, it wasn't used, so it was taken back to the general fund. At least uh, twenty-nine and a half million was taken back to the general fund. Another thirty-seven million, we believe, was not used, uh, and is someplace. And they know nowhere. Uh, yeah, you can never <laughs> find it down well, Springfield. It's like a big black hole. <laughs> so anyway, so all this stuff winds up being underfunded. Uh, some of it, I think, is probably the state police's fault for not insisting. Some of it is probably the governor's fault. Uh, Governor Quinn swept uh, the funds. Uh, Governor Rauner swept the funds. At this point, Governor Pritzker has not swept any funds. So uh, they have to give credit where it's due. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we had the COVID thing hit, and so half the staff of the state police are working from home, and the other are not are not working. There's probably only three or four people in the office. So that's why my friend who started his card in December of last year has not received it yet. Right. And the same is happening with concealed carry and concealed carry renewals. And the worst, there are several things that happen to you. If you answer one of the questions wrong, and uh, and you have to correct it. it. It just never seems to happen. It never seems. Why? To happen. Why is it? And you, all you folks out there, you know, understand where I'm coming from. And it really makes me mad. <laughs> you got a question, just a dumb question. You know, just because you don't know. And you call the people who are supposed to know. And you call them on the phone. And I have done this. I'll bet you a hundred times that I know everybody and you, you watching the show have done it a hundred times and nobody answers the phone. Well, it's because they can't answer the phone. There's nobody there. <laughs> you know, very simple. You hear that? Quit calling the Illinois no, no. State Police. Let me There's tell you nobody that, home. Let me tell you another thing. If you do get somebody and you're you're in a stack of applications and they're working the stack down, yeah. okay. And they pull your application out. When they put it back, they don't put it back in the same order. It's now last. It's on the bottom. It's on the bottom again. So, so don't do that. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't help those guys. I will say that those there's a lot of people down there working pretty hard to do this. Their just hands are tied. I talked to a guy at a gun shop the other day. He told me that gun sales are up two over 200 percent from what they were last year. Right. Right, we're on. Rec uh, it'll be a record year for gun sales. Ammo is hard to get. Ammo is hard to get. Well, people are scared. Do they think there's a reason? To well, you know, the under under law, I have a brochure out there that I should have brought with me. I have a couple in the car, but the title of the brochure is "Will the Police Protect You?" And a lot of people don't understand that the police have no duty to protect any individual person. The Supreme Court has ruled that at, at the, at, in Illinois and every state in the Union and the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that. So you are on your own, folks. When, the, when, the, uh, when things really get bad, it's up to you to protect yourself. Hey, uh, before uh, 
we forget about it, and let's think about the great organization, the Illinois State Rifle Association. It was founded what year? 1903. 1903. By President Theodore Roosevelt. And and tell everybody the what was their mission? What were their, what was their deal? Well, the, ori the original mission was uh, to train people in marksmanship before they went into the U.S. military, primarily mm -hmm. the Army. And uh, because Roosevelt, when he was out looking for the Rough Riders in 1898, he found out that the only people that could shoot straight were not the military. Um, and one time, probably some guy riding bareback out right, in Oklahoma. So he, he went to Illinois, and he got two out of <laughs> Illinois, well, one of which deserted, by the way. I read the history of that one. But <laughs> he anyway, became a politician, by the way. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he later ran for governor. <laughs> he one. governor. But, uh, but anyway, uh, but... Um, uh, the people who, who actually could shoot straight were the were the people on the in the rural areas, the farmers, the the hunters, the frontiersmen, the cattlemen, you know, because they had to. The times would come when they they had to shoot straight. So, what he did is he founded uh, associations in every state. We weren't the only one, but we were the, one of the first ones. We were the, probably the probably the first one, uh, and our job was to train. Uh, people uh, in marksmanship prior to military service because they found out you live a lot longer if you can shoot straight. You know, it's not that hard. Uh, and so uh, so we've been doing that ever since. And when 9-11 when, uh, came uh, a long time ago, we trained lots of, uh, we trained people here in El uh, Peoria. Dean Martin was a trainer, uh, the Naval Reserve and some other, other people who got called up. Mm -hmm. Uh, we trained people at our range in uh, in uh, Bonfield uh, <laughs> several times. We had rifle training, pistol training. Uh, so we qualified these people because that's our mission. That was our original mission. Since then, we've expanded. Uh, the handguns weren't in the first one, so we started we you know you know we started training people on handguns, shotguns, all kinds all kinds of training that we do. And so we we like to do the training and. Right now is a critical time. If you are a new gun owner, you should go get training someplace. So, um, well, I was thinking, you know, people are scared, and that's why you had what forty thousand people apply for a Floyd card in one month. In one month, in the state of Illinois, and seven thousand in one day. Seven thousand in one day, and these are folks that have really most of them never had a gun. Some probably did, but most of them ne never, 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 never had owned a gun. gun. And, and what they found out was that it's so it is nearly impossible to get this done. You can't get this done quickly in the state of Illinois. Right. So, so that's a, that's was, an denial of your ex, yeah. uh, your constitutional right, and right. that's what the lawsuit is about. This right. this latest one. That's right. Uh, so. Um, so, but you have to do that, and but training becomes very, very important. And we, we all last weekend at the uh, our range at Bonfield, which we use as a laboratory for new new classes, you know, classes that meet the needs of today, uh, classes for people who are the first time gun owner, classes for seasoned gun owners, uh, classes for people who want to teach classes, you know, so forth and so on. So we're a laboratory up there. And uh, and so uh, we we work hard. We had four classes last weekend, for example. Mm -hmm. So we had classes all over the place. And uh, now, um, what's it cost to belong to the Illinois State Rifle Association uh, right th now? Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Unless year? you're unless you're a veteran. And you can buy a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. A veteran's twenty five bucks. Veterans twenty five. Policeman's twenty five bucks. Fireman's twenty five bucks. Paramedics mm -hmm. twenty five bucks. That's a good deal. Okay, and you can buy a lifetime membership, which we of course. We like, but the, the the key that people don't see is, why do I want to give you thirty bucks when you're going to go lobby anyway? Because someday we won't be there if you don't. <laughs> how many member? How many members outstanding? Right now we got about twenty six thousand, but right after concealed carry, we had thirty, almost thirty two thousand at the time concealed carry passed. As soon as concealed carry passed, all these guys and they, ladies, dropped, yeah. they quit. Yeah, they didn't understand that the that. The battle in Illinois and every other state is not over. It's not over. It's never going to be over, and you have to stay ready all the time. That's right. And you have to have a staff to do that. The Illinois State Rifle Association has myself and four other lobbyists. Well, hey, I want to thank you for uh, talking about this. And uh, if well, somebody would want more information on the IRSRA, well, they uh, go to our website. It's a pretty complete website. You can spend hours on the thing. But mm -hmm. you know what we need right now to fight what's coming up and what's coming ahead. Uh -huh. 
uh, is more members. So I would uh, say that we need to, uh, to uh, as many people that can join should join. To join. Just go to the, our website, www.isra.org, and there's a way to join online there. And so it's, it's great. If, if, if everyone would do that, we have about 2.7 million firearm owners, legal firearm owners in the state of Illinois. If we had all of those, as I say. You would be the biggest voting block in the United right. States. Right. If we wanted to paint the Capitol pink with yellow polka dots, we could do it. You could do it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but as long as people stay fragmented, though, that's not going to happen. What, um, Ben Franklin, you either hang together or you hang separately. That's exactly the case that we're in right now. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of truth in that statement. Right. It really so, is. Well, I want to thank you, Harry, for your hey, time. The, yeah. Hey, the COVID thing. Uh, yeah, huh? yeah, social distancing. Social you know, distancing. Or as I call it, anti-social distancing. Anti-social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, so. Richard Pearson. Hi, I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. Many guys and gals are cowboys at heart, and everybody likes to shoot a cowboy rifle. And today we have a few examples of some of those guns. We're going to start first with trapdoor spring fills. This is an officer's model, and it's a current production. Then we have the rifle version, and then we have the cavalry model, which is just identical just about to what Custer had at the Little Bighorn. They shoot a 4570, they're a single shot. You put the hammer on half cock, you open the loading gate, you drop your round in, close it cock it fully and you're ready to go. And then we jump up in the lever action rifles and um, these are Uberti and they're exact copies of Winchester 73s. This is a saddle ring carbine. This is a deluxe rifle. And then we Winchester started making them. They're made by Maruku, but they have the Winchester name, octagon barrel, and this is a full size rifle. You want something a little bigger, Winchester comes out with uh, limited edition models. This is a Winchester 1886. Right behind that is the famous Yellow Boy carbine. It's a Winchester 66 copy. It's made by Uberti. This is a copy of a Winchester 92 carbine. It's made by Rossi. This particular rifle is in a 44 Magnum. If you're a big John Wayne fan, they make the John Wayne rifle. This is a 4440, the large loop, just like what he carried in most of his movies. And here's a nice example of some American-made rifles. These are made in New Jersey by the Henry Company. And if you want to do some long-range cowboy shooting, here's an example of a Sharps rifle. This is made by Shiloh Sharps. It's a 45 110 Probably the most common caliber in a Sharps these days is 45 70 And uh, this particular rifle is a special order. It's got the shotgun butt plate, uh, high-grade wood, factory installed uh, peep sight, and a extra heavy barrel. I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. Good shooting. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway. Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. Eastport Marina, one of the only marinas in its class between Chicago and St. Louis, on Mariner's Way in East Peoria. Goodwill, supporting our veterans with job placement assistance, health, housing, and resource referrals. And the General Wayne A. Downing Home for Veterans, all because you shop and donate. And by Lori Feld of Allstate Insurance, conveniently located in Peoria, East Peoria, and Springfield. Our thanks to all of these sponsors.